pounds of static thrust each of them, total of about 65,000, keeping it slightly less than that, um, in the interest of keeping the old girl going nicely. So we got to hear the Vulcan howl, I hope we'll get to hear it again. And you get to see as she turns round onto finals and back down the runway again, that wonderful triangular shape, as designed in 1946 by the wonderful Roy Chadwick, who also designed the Lancaster and the Anson, great Avro aeroplanes. So as Kev brings the Vulcan in along the runway, along the display line, I'm looking to see him accelerate her to about 300 knots, 345 miles an hour. takes the power off, it all goes quiet again. She's in the colours, this aeroplane. Uh, of, she has the Lincoln coat of arms on the fin, plus the Panthers head of number one group. That was the Royal Air Force group that controlled all of the Vulcans. And she represents all of the Vulcan squadrons in the 70s. That's number 9, 12, 27, 35, 44, 50, 83, 101, 617, uh, and the operational conversion unit. She also has painted on her nose the spirit of Great Britain, which really encapsulates all that she stands for. <laughs> now I think next we're going to see Kev Rubens bring her round towards us uh, on the B axis, which I'm sure we've talked about many times today, heading straight in towards us. And then as she tiptoes up on us again, we'll hear the power come on as he takes her into a spiral climb. Vulcan first flew in 1952, only 11 years after the first flight of the Lancaster. Look at the two of them together, and you think they come from different centuries. Not a bit of it. Designed by the same team.
And there you get an idea of the amazing agility of this aeroplane. She doesn't have a big control yoke like most bombers. She has fighter-type control columns for each of the pilots. And of course, she is amazingly agile. In the early days at the Barbara Air Show, their test pilots actually rolled the aeroplane. So that became rather frowned upon. She wasn't allowed to do it anymore. Certainly was in her. And she comes in this time. And you get an idea of the enormous size of that Bombay. Bombay of course is the heart of the That was part of the course. These were more or less wartime dumb bombs, no guidance amongst them or anything. So if you wanted to hit a specific target, you went for a lot of overkill so that you'd be sure of hitting it. And indeed, they did get it. The pilot at that time, Martin Withers, who is now the chief pilot uh, of the Vulcan to the Sky Trust. He was awarded the DFC, and his crew were mentioned in dispatches. As she comes back uh, in front of us again, I uh, expect to see the bomb bay closing. Nowadays it just contains the names of lots and lots and lots of people who have contributed so wonderfully to this land of It's the biggest problem throughout her life has been money. It may seem obvious that it's not funded by the government, but she doesn't belong to our Air Force. And to get this far has cost more than 22 million pounds. CAA, as well as the three technical authority companies, BAE Systems, Marshall Aerospace and Defense Group, and Rolls-Royce. Many other companies have given fantastic help. Airbus, AD Holdings, Beagle Technology, Cranfield Aerospace, Goodrich, Kearsley Airways, Megan, Messier Doughty, and Serco. But it is the three technical authority companies that will finally bring Vulcan's illustrious flying rights to a close.
A little bit of rocking in the crosswind, touch down first, and there's the breaking parachute. So, there she is. I hope you'll be able to see her again sometime this year. But thank you very much, and enjoy that time. Sean Matho, thank you so much for taking us through that. Absolutely magnificent. What a feast of flying we are all enjoying here today in the most magnificent weather. We hope you still have enough energy left for the Red Arrows because they are ready as well. I'm going to hand you over now to Cornelia Mike Red Hands.